crypto assets are a type of private sector digital asset that depends primarily on cryptography and distributed ledger technology such as blockchain. And there are a range of financial instruments based on crypto assets which are being used for investments, for making payments, or as a store of value. Now, while these functions are fairly similar to those performed by, by traditional financial assets, bank deposits, bonds, equities, there are fundamental differences. Most crypto assets do not have any inherent value and are primarily traded for speculative purposes. And as a result, most of them, uh, for most of them, prices fluctuate quite widely. Crypto assets also do not have the safeguards of bank deposits and other financial instruments, and they do not provide holders with basic investor protections as they largely operate outside of regulatory frameworks. Now, looking at it from a, from a sort of overall perspective, um, crypto asset markets are evolving fast. Their market capitalization grew by a factor of 3.5 in 2021, and in the FSBs, you could reach a point where they present a threat to global financial stability due to their scale, structural vulnerabilities, which have to do with the features that I mentioned before, and a growing interconnectedness with the traditional financial system. Do you see any parallels with 2000 and 2007, uh, the, the last banking crisis we had? Are, are there any, is there anything in common with the causes of that crisis and the buildup of, of speculation in, in crypto assets? When we talk about crypto asset markets, we are talking about a, um, a, an ecosystem that is very lightly regulated and, and some activities are um, uh, completely outside the regulatory perimeter. Um, so uh, the, this um, uh, makes quite a difference in terms of uh, the, 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 the policy responses to be considered and the kind of, of policy action that that would be required and the challenges that result from that. So that's the first point. Second point, um, um, uh, we are talking with respect to crypto assets about a market um, current size about two and a half trillion US dollars, which is relatively small compared uh, to the uh, amount of overall financial assets. Um, now, if you think back to 2007, 2008, then um, the the origin of, of the crisis was the U.S. subprime market, which was also um, relatively small compared to the overall financial system. And it was there, again, the interconnections with other parts of the financial system um, and uh, uh, knock-on effects in the form of a loss of confidence, uncertainty about exposures um, that uh, led to a spreading of, of issues. So, um, the, 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 the conclusion that I would draw from that is that um, uh, just comparing a, 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 the size of a market with overall financial assets may be misleading and perhaps provide too much um, of a false sense of, of safety. I think some people who are who are supporters of cryptocurrencies would, would see all this just as the old guard trying to defend its patch you're really just trying to regulate something that is a threat to existing regulators and central banks. It's not to stifle innovation and new ideas. It's not to protect turf and, and protect rents. Right? Uh, the objective here is, is to preserve financial stability as a global public good and create the conditions for safe innovation that benefits people, economies and society overall. 